Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Well, hello everybody. This is KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. And the introduction video here is the drive up to the repeater site. This is in KY4 CKP's vehicle. And uh, I just want to do a quick little introduction to this series. Uh, Chris did a great job with the uh, abandoned repeater site, the first video in this series. This is the second video in the series. And we just kind of wanted to give you an idea of how, what it takes to get up to this site on this, uh, this mountain. Notice how green everything is. Uh, here in 2020, we've had lots of rain, even in the summer. And uh, everything is very green, very verdant, and uh, just as beautiful. And if you've never been to Kentucky, you're missing out. Uh, such pretty, pretty scenery, still very rural in many places. And uh, we're just utilizing this, this road that goes straight up the mountain. Well, not straight up. You can see it's twisty and turny, but it's definitely going up the mountain. And this is a good time to introduce why uh, introduce this series and why we're doing this series. Many people use repeaters every day, and they don't think about, well, where is that repeater? How was the site chosen? How was it set up? How is it maintained? And that's what we're going to get into in this series. We're going to show you there, there's a group of people, sometimes it's spearheaded by one person, but there's a group of people usually that are very, very um, interested in making sure that a repeater is online and usable. And uh, when you utilize a repeater, there's a great deal of time and care that has gone into setting it up and maintaining it. And so we wanted to show you what some of those uh, elements are in setting up a repeater site and maintaining it and uh, to give you a better appreciation of the work that goes into it and hopefully inspire you to join and ha join a ham radio club and get involved with these kinds of activities um, you know a lot of people want to use the ham radio and uh, for uh, uh, emergency communications and that's exactly what it's good for among other things but again get involved uh, Find out what it's going to take to maintain the site in your area. Uh, make friends with your local club that helps maintain that site more than likely. Some sites are maintained by individuals, but in our case, we have two major sites. Uh, we have our main repeater site for the Lake Cumberland area, and then we have a secondary site, this one, that we're driving up to here. Um, so we're trying to inspire folks and to also give you an idea of how much work goes into setting up a repeater site. And it's not inexpensive it requires an investment not only in time but also in money and this is another reason why you need to join a club in your area not because they they need you know your money all the time but it's like any charitable organization uh, they need money to continue their existence and to continue to provide a service you pay a monthly bill every uh, month for cell phone or for TV ham radio is in that same ballpark and this is for your emergency preparedness so think about joining a club and providing some financial assistance on a monthly basis if at all possible that's what allows these projects for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association to go forward it's caring members of the club that uh, provide that financial assistance well let's get back to the video here and as you can see we're nearing the top of the mountain the trees are starting to clear out a little bit you can just see the commercial tower there in the top left corner and this is a private access road that KY4 CKP is driving up now that we've been given special permission to utilize normally we wouldn't use this road to reach the repeater site we actually have our own entrance which will come up in the next segment and so uh, Chris here is uh, driving up and just uh, analyzing where he needs to park. Um, but you can see how overgrown it is. There's still some cars here that were abandoned and will need to be cleared out and taken to a scrap yard. So at the end of this access road is a family cemetery. We're going to turn around and then park his vehicle. So come along for the ride, folks. Lots of great videos coming up in the future. This one, we're going to start cleaning up the site, taking out some trees and uh, 
start making this site something that is worthy of a new shack with lots of expensive equipment in it. So let's park our vehicles and let's get busy. This is KY4BDP, Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Welcome back to the abandoned repeater site. And uh, we just wanted to give you an idea of how overgrown this is. Um, this is a repeater site we've used in the past, but due to uh, uh, deaths and families and things, we didn't own the site. And so uh, we, uh, we had to let it go for a while. And then we have since re-procured it uh, on a lease but it is overgrown and like a lot of sites in southeastern Kentucky sometimes, not the best well kept up. Um, so I just wanted to kind of take you in on the access road just so you can kind of see what it looks like this morning. We're going to start clearing this out today and uh, we'll just walk up the little road here. Now there's pens, you know, where people have set up for pigs and things and we've got trash all up and down through here. And eventually a lot of this will get picked up. We'll have a work day just for picking up trash. The owner of the property is going to help us out as well. And uh, the son of who uh, of the original person who owned it. And as you can see, just, you know, pretty overgrown. Here's a trailer that was burned out at some point. So that's not going to be use. But there is a power pole right up here. You know, notice that there's power coming into this pole. And at the moment, that's the only power that comes into the site uh, for what we can use. And what we're going to do is extend that power to a new pole that will be over where our new shack is going to go. So again, we've got, you know, projection TVs up here and some other stuff. A lot of this is going to get cleared out. And then we're going to take some power off this pole and take it to a new pole right over there, a new pole. So again, we're just walking up <laughs> the access road here. And... Uh, yeah, it's not beautiful. Lots of trees need to be taken out for us to even get a shed up here. Uh, a lot of these trees are very young and they were just allowed to grow and we'll have to take some of these out. We're not looking to take every tree out. We don't want to take down trees that are unnecessary, uh, that are necessary. But when you got guy lines and things like that for your tower, you can't have trees growing up in and around uh, the tower guy lines and so forth. And so yeah so we do have a little bit of a clearing here and there is another way to access the property going off to the right there and coming in from a gravel driveway but that's so overgrown it's it's going to be difficult to even get vehicles up that way they've already cleared out some of the uh, the cars and stuff that were up here the previous owner was collecting different types of cars but they sat here in the woods six or eight of them have already been taken away we've got some vanigans right over here. So there's a couple of those and another uh, Volkswagen uh, station wagon right over there. A lot of that's going to be cleared out. And then of course we've got the old shack, this Vietnam era green shack right here that you saw in the first video that uh, Chris put together. The dead pig is gone, thankfully. <laughs> there's all kinds of wildlife up here. And then we've got the tower. Now the reason we're coming back to this site is because this tower is in a primo location. 140 foot tower on top of one of the highest little knobs, hills, mountains, whatever you want to call it around here. And uh, we're, uh, we want to take advantage of that tower once again because it's in great, great location. There's a commercial tower right next to it, Chris mentioned, was about 200 yards away. It's not even that. You're probably looking at that commercial tower is maybe 100 feet away, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. It's not far at all uh, that they use for some of the cell and things like that. So, yeah, that's. That's getting up here and everything that needs to be cleared out. Lots of trees need to be cut down at some point for uh, ingress. Uh, and just to get the shed, the new shed that we're bringing up here, we'll show you that in another video. So in the next segment, we'll show you some of the progress we're making as we start cutting down these trees, trimming back limbs, um, spraying some uh, herbicide on some of the uh, weeds and so forth in and around the area that we're gonna put the new trailer. And uh, it's going to be a process. We're not going to get it all done today, that's for sure. We're just trying to uh, cut back some trees, limbs, and whatnot. Another day, we're going to do a shed. Another day, we're going to talk about some of the trash in and around 
that you can see. And uh, another day we'll talk about uh, installing things in the shed, things like that. It's going to be a really cool series. So we'll bring you back in the next segment as we begin to clean up the area. All right, folks, we're back out here at the abandoned site. And we're just going to walk you in one of the entrances before we do any cleanup today. Got a few folks out here. Got plenty of bug spray on. The rest of our crew will be here shortly. And of course, the weeds and everything have grown up. Seems like six inches since we were here a week ago. May not be quite that bad, but it's pretty bad. Plain dirt road, pretty muddy. Still lots of trash. The property owner is going to do some cleanup. When they can get to it, they're going to get a bulldozer, take out quite a few trees, <clears throat> clean up the trash. But we're going to do some trimming, cut down a few small trees. Get things ready to go today. Alrighty, I know for some of you watching the video, it's going to look like, yeah, what did you do? Well, if you were here, you would have seen us clear a lot of branches down through the entranceway uh, that uh, are in and around this power line. Now, this line's ultimately going to get replaced, we're pretty sure, because we're going to put in a 30 amp trailer receptacle on the power line there. But all the way down this uh, entry uh, way, we've cut trees down and there's more light coming in than there was earlier so i'll just walk down here a little of the way so you can see that but it's still overgrown we're gonna have to uh you know spray a little bit and knock down some of these really tall weeds but uh and we've got another branch right there at the entrance we're gonna have to take out eventually but uh one of the problems we have here in kentucky are ice storms and so we don't want any branches hanging out over areas that might cut down a power line or something like that. So we will be looking out for that as well as we continue to clean up the site. Now, keep in mind, we, we work on these uh, work days about two hours. So we're not trying to kill ourselves when we do these videos. We've sprayed this area, took down a tree over here that was gonna be in the way. We're gonna have to move this wood pile. A lot of this junk has to be moved out. We sprayed all of this. This is where the new shed's gonna go, by the way, is kind of back up, kind of corner to corner with the old shed. We have not touched on this side of the shed. And there's guy lines going down that way, and we're gonna have to take a look at which trees are gonna have to come down so that the guy lines are not gonna be in any way interfered with, as well as down that way on the other side of the tower. So yeah, a lot of work done. We definitely cleared out this entryway. This comes from a private road and uh, probably the shed's gonna come down this way. So we got rid of a lot of the branches that would have impeded the shed from coming in. So we got that done. So we're gonna close it out. This is our uh, repeater work day. Cut down a lot of trees and branches and uh, we got more work to do at the next work day. We'll end it here. This is KY4 BDP 
For KY4CKP, KK4JPX, KK4YUG, and AC4DM, we'll see you down the road. 73s.